How did animals first evolve the splendid machinery for motion? What creatures gave rise to life's glorious dance? This flower-like creature is an anemone, one of an ancient group of animals called cnidarians. How could such simple creatures have given rise to life's diverse ballet? Early naturalists wondered, were they plants, animals, or something in between? Hundreds of millions of years ago, before animals swam the ocean's waters or scurried along the seafloor, only one group of animals existed. They were sponges. Then creatures far more complex sprang into being and changed the world forever. These were the first Cnidarians. They may not look like pioneers, but Cnidarians marked a turning point for animal behavior. These creatures were the first to wield sensitive tentacles that could actually reach out and perceive the world. More than 500 million years ago, Cnidarians invented other features we take for granted today. Here was an animal with a mouth. And connected to that mouth, a stomach to digest food. It was a brilliant innovation that would spread throughout the animal kingdom. But Cnidarians brought even greater inventions. These deceptively simple creatures invented The very first animal movements may have looked much like these subtle stirrings. With two sets of muscles, Cnidarians can bend in any direction. To control their muscles, they rely on another Cnidarian invention, special cells, cells called nerves. Through a set of these nerves, electrical impulses trigger one set of muscles to contract, pushing the animal higher. By contracting the other set of muscles, the animal can flex itself into the perfect pose for snagging food. It looks so simple, but all creatures that crawl, soar, or swim today rely on muscle and nerve, their ancient inheritance from Cnidarians. Appearances can be deceiving. Creatures that look slow and simple actually started the nimble dance of life. Cnidarians were the first active predators on the planet. Like its ancestors, this anemone may seem docile, but it has tricks for snaring fast-moving flesh. Lining its tentacles are millions of special capsules called nematocysts. Inside the capsules lie thread-like projectiles loaded with deadly poisons. When unleashed, these weapons fire with the acceleration of a rifle bullet. They pierce their target and pump it full of paralyzing toxins. 
the tentacles must be touched before the weapons can discharge. And for that, the prey must come to the anemone. The goby is a swift swimmer, with eyes and senses attuned to any sign of danger and a brain able to process complex signals. It seems better equipped for survival. For the goby, one unguarded moment could be fatal. Dragging the fish into its mouth, the anemone devours it with tools invented by its ancient ancestors. The goby will be slowly digested alive. For more than half a billion years, Cnidarians have been honing and adapting their nematocysts. And they've developed a stunning array of weapons. Some are even laced with toxins that can be fatal to humans. But these barbed projectiles are used for more than capturing food. They are also weapons deployed against their own kind. These anemones appear to be peacefully coexisting in a tide pool, but trouble is brewing. A struggle over a patch of rock. Splaying their tentacles, the animals detect each other. Now, there's no turning back. Each animal prepares for battle, inflating a series of sacks, special tools for combat. Inside each sack are hundreds of thousands of weapons. But in order to deploy its weapons, each combatant must reach out and strike its enemy. Anemone battles can last for hours, even days. The fighting is brutal and can even lead to death. With each strike, thousands of poisonous weapons are unleashed penetrating flesh, pumping soft bodies full of toxins. As the arsenal is used up, the weapon sacks are left empty and tattered. Triumphant, one anemone spreads its tentacles as though flaunting its victory. The vanquished retreats within itself and will eventually move away. These tiny coral polyps are also cnidarians, and like their cousins, they are predators, dining on plankton. Instead of warring, they build. Working together, they create one of the greatest wonders of the natural world, a spectacle of colors and formations like no other, coral reefs. Anchored to a rock on the ocean floor, a solitary cnidarian called Stompfia. It looks vulnerable, but looks can be deceiving. Stompfia would seem to make an easy meal for any determined predator. Today, it's being stalked by a stealthy foe, the sea star Dermasterius. Sampling the water with its sensory tentacles, the sea star inches toward its prey. Stomphia remains unaware of the approaching danger. But when Dermasterius comes close enough to touch it, Stomphia springs into action. In a 
a stunning defensive maneuver, Stomphia frees itself from the rock and swims away. This is one of just a few anemones that can actually swim. Over millions of years, some cnidarians evolved in a dramatically new direction. The edges of their mouth extended, and they developed arm-like feeding structures. Their tentacles became thin strands. Their cylindrical stalk transformed to a gelatinous bell and a familiar, ghost-like animal took shape. With the evolution of jellyfish, cnidarians may well have been the first animals to swim the world's oceans. With a body plan that would endure the ages, they entered watery realms across the planet. Today, these ocean drifters are prolific, and they come in a stunning variety of shapes and sizes. Trailing their deadly tentacles, jellyfish slowly trawl for prey. Scientists know that jellyfish thrive in the upper ocean. Apparently, the remarkable creatures that dominate the upper waters are also abundant in the deeper reaches. This astounding creature known as Preya is a combination of the two basic cnidarian shapes, the pulsing bell-shaped medusa and the stalk-like polyp with trailing tentacles. Spanning up to 120 feet, Preya is the longest predator in the world longer even than a blue whale. Deeper, a colobonema, a jellyfish with a surprising defense. When startled, it detaches its tentacles, leaving them behind as decoys to distract would-be attackers. This jellyfish has never been seen before, never classified, never given a name. Its size, three feet in diameter, makes it larger than most other jellyfish in the world. To some, these cnidarians appear fantastic, surprising, even otherworldly. But in this realm, they are the dominant animals. of years ago, unlikely pioneers sparked a revolution. Cnidarians set animal life in motion. So much of what we take for granted today began with cnidarians. Simple creatures that forever set into motion the magnificent shape of life. To survive here, most creatures must feed on others and at the same time avoid becoming prey themselves. 
To confuse predators, some animals travel in dense schools. Others are protected by heavy suits of armor. Some rely on size, power, and deadly fangs. But this is the story of creatures who carry weapons that are exquisitely subtle, and yet no less effective than the razor-sharp teeth of the shark. These are the creatures armed with venom. Many venomous creatures advertise their weapons with flamboyant color. Nudibranchs are sea slugs. Many are protected by powerful stinging cells lining the feather-like serrata on their backs. But amazingly, these venomous cells are not grown by nudibranchs. They are stolen. The stinging cells actually belong to hydroids and sea anemones whose venomous tentacles are deadly snares for tiny prey. Swarms of diminutive crustaceans and tiny fish drift over the reef and pass through the waiting tentacles of anemones. Contact with the tentacles causes venom-laden harpoons, called pneumatocysts, to fire paralyzing or killing the prey before the anemone draws the tiny meal down into its mouth. These are the venomous cells that some nudibranchs steal. And this is one of the largest thieves, the rainbow nudibranch. Although essentially blind, the rainbow nudibranch crawls over the sea floor, hunting tube anemones by smell. If startled, the anemone is quick to withdraw into the safety of its tube. So the nudibranch must approach delicately. to the sting, the sea slug dives face first into the tangle of tentacles, devouring as many as he can. The rainbow nudibranch has harvested a meal. He's also bolstered his defenses. The anemone's stinging cells will not be destroyed. Instead, they will be passed undigested through the nudibranch's gut and transfer to their new defensive post in the serrata on his back. Many nudibranchs steal their stinging cells. It's an excellent defense strategy, but it's not perfect. This is Navanax, a sea slug with an appetite for nudibranchs. He's immune to their sting, so when he catches one, the nudibranch's stolen stingers are no defense. Other animals use anemone venom for defense in less subtle ways. Anemone fish simply make their homes within a forest of stinging tentacles. Their bodies secrete a mucus that protects them from the anemone's arsenal of venomous harpoons. Here, another animal uses anemones for protection. The anemone hermit crab cultivates a garden of stinging anemones on his borrowed shell. But hermits eventually outgrow their shells. And for this crab, it's time for a change.
The new shell is a good fit, but his anemone garden is too valuable to be left behind. The anemones are an excellent protection against the crab's deadliest enemy, the octopus. So they too must move. The hermit's gentle prodding is a signal to the anemones to release their grip. The anemones don't want to be left behind. They benefit from being transported to good feeding grounds by the crab so they submit to relocation willingly. Finally, his task is complete. Now the crab has a new home, as well as the protection of his venomous garden. Close relative to sea anemones is drifting over the reef. Jellyfish are essentially self-propelled anemones who drag their venomous tentacles in tow. At times, converging currents gather moon jellyfish together by the millions, creating pulsating clouds of translucent jewels. sparkles with plankton, juvenile fish, and transparent killers. This 10-inch predator packs a sting of incredible intensity. It's a sea wasp. Contact with some species can cause agonizing death in a full-grown man. Any creature that touches the wasp's stinging tentacles is almost instantly killed. Then, it is pulled into the body of the wasp and slowly digested. Dark clouds are passing over the reef. But this is no meteorological phenomenon. This is a cloud of thimble jellyfish. Thimble jellies travel together in massive swarms. Without eyes to see or a brain to think, just how they stay together is unknown. But they manage nonetheless. with a potent venom, thimble jellies are relished by many of the reef's inhabitants who are immune to the sting. This green sea turtle snaps up thimbles like popcorn. Perhaps the venom adds a spicy burn to the flavor. As the swarm approaches the reef, other animals move out to sample the exotic meal. Despite the sting, a French angelfish also seems pleased with the bite-sized morsels. A mysterious monster is rising from the depths. 
Its pulsating bell is over two feet in diameter. A squadron of these giant jellyfish has risen from the abyss. They are a new species, completely unknown to science. And riding among venomous folds are other strange visitors from far away. A Medusa fish is resistant to the jelly's sting and finds refuge behind the deadly umbrella. A weird crab clings to the bell of one giant. It seems to be scraping stinging cells from the skin of the jellyfish and depositing them on strange tufts attached to its rear legs. It's a behavior never before seen, and it remains entirely unexplained. These creatures are unintentional visitors to shallow waters, and many will die along these rocky shores. As they pass over the reef, bright orange Garibaldi and other reef fish ascend to sample a culinary novelty. The taste is unique and seems to be worth the occasional twinge. Concealed beneath this sand, growing darkness. It's a logical strategy, and one that nature has orchestrated into a spectacular annual event. Eight nights after the full moon in August. On this single night of the year, something incredible happens. On this night, the coral reef itself will spawn. Two hours after sunset, coral polyps are swollen to bursting. Suddenly, it begins. Coral polyps erupt, spewing sperm into the night sea. Within minutes, clouds of sperm are drifting over the entire reef like the smoke of an undersea forest fire. And spawning is not confined to a single species of coral. Brain corals release packets of eggs that float toward the surface. In fact, nearly all the coral species on this reef will spawn on this single night. Soon the sea is flooded with galaxies of coral egg packets. It's a brilliant natural strategy. Predators are overwhelmed with food and within minutes can eat no more. The majority of the spawn floats away unharassed. Other creatures also grasp the opportunity to spawn when predators are in abeyance. 
a brittle star stands on tiptoe and releases its spawn to drift away, unmolested, with the eggs and sperm of countless other species. Then returns to its lair in a dark crevice. Soon, the sea is filled with clouds of spawn. The reef has cast its progeny to the sea wind. Most will be lost in the deep sea, but some may settle far away, giving birth to new reefs. <laughs>